What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called Bulwark. This is a bit of a weirdie. This is from the developer that made the Falconeer. And this is an odd, strange city building, colony survival, logistics. Like, it wears a lot of hats, but it takes place on kind of like a water world where there's very limited space that you can build. And the entire game is kind of about figuring out how you can get certain resources to certain areas in order to make certain upgrades happen so that when pirates attack or when you're under assault by various factions or like wars or whatever else, you have the best flow of industry possible to give you an advantage. And this is a weird game. I've played it for about an hour now and I do have some thoughts about it, but we're gonna dive in for about 30 minutes, take a look at this demo, see if it's something you like, see if it's something you wanna get. You can play this demo for yourself right now if you want to. I've got the link for you down below in the description. And then on top of that, you also can check out my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live. This is a limited demo. I don't know if we're going to get like a full 30 minutes out of it because we can only build 50 things as we go through. But 50 lasted 30 minutes when I was playing around with the game, no problem. So hopefully it'll be all right. Let's dive on in. This is the campaign mode. Here you get a taste of the open world building sandbox. It has a basic tutorial, a resource system based only on distance rather than how much you can produce, and an ever-expanding set of encounters, world events, and unlockables. Now, the developer took the time to animate himself, and not just animate himself, animate a conceptualized version of himself into the game, and then also act as the tutorializer for the purposes of this demo. That's, that's go get him right there. That's multi-tiered talent, because the guy's not a bad voice actor, actually. Our scouts have spotted a suitable landmass ahead. It seems we've found our new home. We need a place for our people to rebuild. Find us a decent spot in the shallows or atop a mighty cliff. So this is our airship. There are a couple different facets to this game. Uh, this game, in essence, is about building towers, connecting them with walkways, and you do this in a UI-less environment. So this game does not have a build menu. It does not have little icons of what building you want to build. Buildings are deployed contextually based on what your mouse is mousing over. So if you want to build next to this stone yard right here, the game will rightfully just assume that you want to build a quarry right there. Same for lumberjacking, same for iron mining, and so on and so forth. For now, we need to find a spot to put our first tower down. And I kind of like the idea of our first tower being on top of this crag right here. So there we go. We'll right click on it. And as you can see, outpost. from it, our people will settle whatever you built. It will require wood to do so. Use your surveyor to find some sea trees, the giant fungi that grow in these parts. There's our first tower. If we press spacebar, it'll take us into build mode, and we can take like a better look at this little building that we just erected. Buildings have a couple of tiers right now. They start out basic stone and iron effectively and so we need to get i think actually doing a lumberjack right here will probably work out the best so we'll put the lumberjack actually out in the water uh, because they can do that buildings that are out in the water will be on pontoons and they float and they work perfectly fine but you can't build in the depths so the deep water is darker blue and if you build out there it's automatically a harbor and harbors are used for setting up trade routes to get resources from far off places back to the central kingdom effectively okay. now what we need to do we now have a wood mill that will power our basic building needs connected to our outposts we should have enough wood to build towers and walkways between them what we want to do now is we need to connect these with walkways so that the wood is going back to our central tower to get resources to where they are needed and bring in settlers start by building our first walkway now great we have our first resource but there are more Time to find a suitable quarry for rock, and we can upgrade our buildings and walkways, as well as our outposts. Did you did you build that properly right there? It, se it seems like you did not connect. It did indeed connect. You can actually press tab at any time to verify that resources are going to areas. So the orange is always wood, the green is always manpower and workers. I think blue is stone, and I think purple is iron. So what we need to do now is we need to get out of build mode. And while he's repeating himself, we're going to build a quarry right over here. 
So there it is. We've dropped a whole bunch of supplies, and the quarry has been built. This should be producing stone now. We need to go to build mode. Our settlement now has a stone quarry. Make sure it's connected, and you will be able to upgrade wooden towers and walkways to stone towers and walkways. What the game doesn't say right here is that upgrading your walkways specifically allows your resources to travel further out to the periphery of your kingdom as it gets larger and bigger. That is the context to why you want to build those walkways. So the tutorial does a good job at getting the basic mechanics across, but where it kind of, it doesn't give you context on like why you should be doing things basically. I was going to say, that should build into, like, stone. And as you can see, your people flow around on their own, and your population, your manpower will go up right here. That was a three a second ago. Now it's a four because somebody built a little shack right there, and somebody built a little labor yard right there, uh, basically. So it's kind of, like, cool things going on. All right, so that's been done. We'll go back over here. In place. You can upgrade this tower to stone now. Any walkways built from it will also be stone walkways now. Look at all the little houses that have been built along the bluffs right there. I don't know if they're using zip lines to get in between these walkways or like what they're doing, but hey, it's kind of cool. Uh, we need to upgrade this tower. There we go. You can upgrade something by selecting it and just right clicking on its base. Just off the coast in several places, a mine there will be most useful. It will also require us to build a connecting set of harbors. So now that this is stone. It is the key to the full potential of our settlement. Oh, there you go. There's another little building down here. Some kind of tumbler or grinder or something. I don't know what that is, but they didn't build it the last time I played the game. A lot of the stuff in this game, I don't know exactly what it is because the game doesn't say. Like, you'll do some combination of building walkways and towers and, like, a new building you've never seen will just pop up next to one of your industrial buildings. And you'll be like, what is this building right here? Like, what does this do? Like, you can't select it. It appears to be some kind of quarry upgrade would be my guess. And then down by our wood mill as well, if you take a look, they built like a little paddock right there that stores the wood and they've got like a little boat right here. I don't know what the little boat does, but they built a little boat. There's all kinds of weird stuff going on. Uh, they want me to go get an iron resource here. I think I'm going to make like a little spit over here, actually. We'll put that right there. And then we'll kind of have this guy go out to this rock right here. And then maybe we'll have that go... Ooh, yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, he got messed up. Hold on, I gotta kill him. There we go. I want him to go to the top of that rock right there, but I don't know if it'll let me do it. It's kind of hard to tell from the camera angles, in all honesty. Sometimes. Did it work? Hey, it worked! We got, like, a little lighthouse tower over here. Nice, dude. Uh, it doesn't look like the stone is traveling far enough to upgrade all these, but it is going far enough to upgrade there. And it is going far enough to upgrade here. And then I think... Yeah, we can upgrade that to stone now. And then I need... I can't upgrade that building, unfortunately. Yeah, it's still staying wood right there, unfortunately. So it doesn't really matter. But what I can do is I can maybe have like a... A cross plot that runs over to there. Hey, there's our little stone walkway. And it looks like... What did they build? Oh, it's like a little Mines of Mori. It's like a little stone gateway that they go inside of in order to get up to that upper tower. And that has provided us enough to where I can upgrade this into stone now. Because the transit network is stronger. And then I can upgrade that to stone. And there it is. Unfortunately, it kind of glitched out right there. And it doesn't look super pretty. There, there's still, like, usually the building works organically, but sometimes it gets a little bit odd and clips out through stuff. Now I'm going to go back to my harvester, and we're going to go get the iron that's over on this side. And then we're going to have to upgrade everything in order to make sure the transit of resources is going reasonably well. Unfortunately, we've got a pretty nasty storm going on right now. So there is an iron mine over here that is doable. There's also another one on that other side over there. I don't know what the most effective iron mine is going to be to play around with because you use buildings called harbors in order to go across those really long distances and if you you get a limited amount of harbors so you kind of have to be careful about where you place them. You can really kind of screw yourself by putting harbors in bad spots 
Uh, let's go back over here. Luckily, you can just tear them down and rebuild them if you don't like them, but still. Let's put the iron mine right there. There it is. Iron mine is now in place. And then we need to have a harbor. The harbor can be right here. Our harbor has been built, and as you can see, it's now producing iron. Uh, we have to assign captains to this, and the captains have specialties. Some captains specialize in moving wood, some of them specialize in moving workers, some of them specialize in moving stone. This guy is good with iron, and so let's assign him. Harbors always need to be built as pairs. As soon as you build two, a trade route will connect them. Ships will appear to carry your resources over vast distances. Yeah, and so now it's going to want to build kind of like a sister pair for this trade route. And once again, we got to find a good spot for it to be. I think that's the best spot. It is a little bit of a long run in order to get it there. But if I put it on this side, it's going to limit how I can build. And sooner or later, I'm going to need to bring in more stone. And so I'd like to keep this harbor free right here so that I can bring stone around that horn over there, maybe. And so I know this looks a little bit redundant, and it looks like I'm building that farther than I should. Now at our disposal. You should be able to focus on building up command towers. They can be upgraded with additional floors, as well as many foundations and balconies. Okay, so it doesn't like this hardly at all. Our metal is barely moving right now, which is kind of a bummer. I might be able to get it to expand further if I focus on these towers. A mighty command. So there's the metal. And there's a metal tower right there. And then if I connect them with a metal walkway, is that helping me at all? It's not really helping me, unfortunately. So what we may want to do is we may actually... Okay, let's get rid of that. And we'll go back, and I'll just put it over here like it preferred. The shorter run, I think, will help the iron propagate faster. I was just kind of trying to play with my meta knowledge from the last time I played the game. And so there we go. We'll connect it right there. Trade route has been established. I don't know if I can get that closer. Like, I want it to connect to the central building, because then it'll transmit our iron further. We're having the same problem here that we had in the other spot, which is that the iron gets a little bit wobbly as it goes into, like, the central area, because it's passing through a building that can't be upgraded yet first. Like, I'm pretty sure I can't upgrade this building. Now at our disposal. You should be able to focus on building up command towers. They can be upgraded with additional floors as well as many foundations and balconies. So here's my thinking. I kind of feel like... I kind of feel like we kill off this wood right here to move it to the backside of that mountain so that we can build a command tower in this thing's spot, and then we have a straight shot with our iron because I feel like this building is causing problems. That's what I feel like. So let's try and rebuild this over here. And then once we've rebuilt it, this isn't sturdy enough to build on. Well, you better you better figure it out, chief. The incline is too steep to build upon. I don't think it is. I think we're All solid. The resources now at our disposal. You should be able to focus on building up command towers. They can be upgraded with additional floors, as well as many foundations and balconies. I mean, the wood is trying its best right now. That extra transit distance is kind of causing a problem. A uh, we can tower. upgrade these. So every time you click on the base, it makes it another step to taller. And so were I to do that right there, and then were I to take this and to go up by, like, you know, another one, we could make a sky bridge right there that would connect across the top and kind of wreath that in shadow right there, which is kind of a cool way to play around with the game. Like, there's, there's lots of interesting things you can fiddle with in this title. Oh, metals aren't getting there. Okay. And in range of an ore mine. This isn't sturdy enough to build on. 
It's being fiddly right now. There we go. I de-fiddled it. I de-fiddledy diddledy it. Uh, it was being fiddly about the incline. Sometimes the building can be a little bit odd and not want to play nice. Uh, we have basically no wood circulating around right now, which is kind of a problem. Let me go back to this little tower right here and we'll upgrade them and see if that helps a bit because that has given us a little bit of stone. Let's take them on up to iron. And then this guy right here is just barely getting iron, but I think it's going to be okay. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. All the major resources now at our disposal. You should be able to focus on building up command towers. They can be upgraded with additional floors, as well as many foundations and balconies. Yeah, so we can take this foundation right here, and if you right-click on it, it will get taller, as I was talking about previously. And then you can do those little sky bridges. Uh, they want me to do balconies, though, so I'm going to take this guy up really high, and then we're just going to do, like, a, a balcony over here, I guess. There we go. And it'll make them like a little bit fatter in various directions. This ends the tutorial, but you can keep building and exploring. Set up colonies, unlock new buildings, hire captains, and even commanders and spawn units. I'm creating more advanced world content, but for now, there are a few people to meet, and some of them are friendly, some of them are not. Thank you for playing. There you go. As you can see, your towers kind of grow organically, and it will provide new spots for people to live on and stuff like that. Like, we just kind of created that, and the game just conjures the procedural clumping, like, out of its butt cheeks in order to make it look good. And then it surrounds it with other little buildings. And so it's kind of an interesting concept for a game. Like, they've got some unique things happening that I think actually kind of hold the game up a little bit. This isn't sturdy enough to build on. Tis not sturdy enough to build upon. Okay. Well, I wanted the iron transit to go a little bit further, and the iron transit did not work for me, so that leaves us kind of in a situation where I think we're going to need more spots for people to live on. That much is certain. It looks like we built... What have we built down here? I see little houses and stuff being added on, and there it is. We got six workers now. Yeah, take this thing out to sea. I fully support that. I like that idea. I don't know how far out we can take this thing, but hey. Uh, it looks like this can be upgraded to stone with where it's at right now. Uh, the camera in this game, you may be wondering why I'm not giving you great camera angles. So, you use Q, E, and WAST in order to move the camera around to incline it and to rotate it and to zoom in and to zoom out. Uh, you can do some of that with the mouse, but the rotation and the incline is done with the right click. And the right click is also your contextual button. And so what will end up happening is if you use the right click for stuff, it can sometimes get a little bit weird uh, and deploy buildings where you don't want them to be. He can now be iron, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to make him iron real fast. And then we'll kind of just like take him up a little bit. And, like, my goal here is I want this to connect via a sky bridge to the main headquarters. I don't think it wants to do it to the main headquarters. I might be able to do iron roads right there, though. Yeah, it looks like we did. It built some kind of, like, bastion with an elevator right there. Cool. More often than not, it seems like the building system clumping everything together works. Like, it's got to be a complicated algorithm that determines what all these little systems do when you cut them loose. Yeah, put that out over there. Maybe have, like, a little run over to there. This guy's got access to stone, and I can... Incline is too steep to build upon. What if I do it from this way? Will you love me then? I cannot build here. There is no tower with access to wood. Oh, nearby. they don't have wood available. Yeah, that's what depression feels like. 
I can upgrade him to stone, but I can't do much else. There we go. At least we got stone roads running over this way now. What if I do that? Will that give me wood? Is this an idea that produces wood between the two of us? It does not produce wood between the two of us. Well, our city's looking rad as hell. Like, I just want to point out that this is a dope fantasy city right here. Like, this is the kind of place that I would love to visit inside a D&D &D game. Looks cool to me. I do think. So, if I wanted to get workers out here. So, he's moving workers out this way. Workers are actively making it out to this area. So, that kind of makes me wonder. What if... Oh, he's got a question for me. The king. Is there any spot over here that I can fit kind of just like a generic tower? Maybe get more people working on iron so that it transmits further? Oh, so we need to salvage refugee outposts and relocate them. Okay, that's fine. I know how that mechanic works. I've played around with that. So, like, while you're cruising around the open world, you'll find people that have questions for you, like this guy right here. This guy is a pirate, and he's a captain for hire. If we accept, we get him as a transport vessel, actually. Doesn't really have any downsides, so let's go ahead and do it. There's also another wood producer over here. I'm sort of curious. What is that? Hold on. There's something on the backside of this crag over here, too. What are you? Let's see here. This is Freeman Zolo. The meager holding was always a last resort, and we need a more solid home. Demolish this temporary haven so that we can re rebuild it on the spot of your choosing. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So if we want to bulldoze this place, you just hold down shift. And there you go. It has now been murdered, and I can relocate it wherever I want to relocate it. I don't know. I think I was thinking about increasing the amount. So workers are going over there. But what if I put workers behind the wood mill over here? Would allow the transmission of wood a little bit further? So, like, let's say we put our new place over here. And then we connect it to right there. That's added three workers that we can play around with. My hope was kind of that it would... Well, I want to build on top of this thing over here. Let's see if we can do it. Dude, that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> this little guy, like, lives up on, on the tippy top, bro. He lives up on a little tippy top. He got, like, a little tippy tops going on. We need stone to build here. Make sure this location has access to our quarry. Yeah, has this been upgraded? This has not been upgraded. We lack the metals to build this structure. Make sure this location is connected and in range of an ore mine. That has not truly... Actually, it upgraded a little bit of that to wood right... Or to stone right there. Maybe. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out the specifics. So the game doesn't tell you exactly how resources propagate. And from what the developer said at the beginning of the tutorial about how the resources spread based on distance rather than production makes me think that the current resource system and its logistics are... A placeholder until the intended system is in place that's just kind of my thinking for right now at least that's what it feels like to me it looks like I can get like another little tower out to here too we lack the metal I don't know if I if I should do that make sure this location is connected and in range of an all mine. I don't know I can do it whether or not it's a good idea remains to be seen it looks like little houses are popping up down here. Yeah, look at that. We got like little stilt houses popping up all over the place. Nice. Our population has gone up. I was watching during one of the edits, and while watching during one of the edits, there is a direct correlation when they build these little houses and stuff. When they build the little houses and things, the population being provided by central locations goes up. And so I think I just need a little bit more context about how all these systems work before I can speak to their efficacy, basically. And we also have the other thing. It's that, like, it's kind of a placeholder for right now because it sounds like... It sounds to me as though what is going to happen is 
when this number goes up, so like let's say this said that it was producing six or seven of the resource, I think that means it'll go out six or seven hops. For right now, it doesn't work that way and it looks like it's limited because that's like what, one, two, three, four. Yeah, and then it kind of falls apart. Oh, we got five right there. So it did go up based on the population that it's surrounded by. Did they build any supplementary buildings? Sometimes they'll, if you watch, they'll build like a little thing over here that's related to the lumber industry. It'll be like a secondary sawmill off to the side, or it'll be like a big paddock where there's a whole bunch of lumber planks that have been loaded. Like lots of cool little things like that. This has photo mode too, right? Yeah, it has photo mode too, where you can free fly around and you can kind of look at the city that you've built right there. <laughs> Cool stuff. I didn't even mean to take a screenshot right there. That was an accident. I was put. I was trying to figure out what makes me go up or down in altitude. Oh well, back to the game itself. Let's do a little bit more exploration in this video to figure out where we want to go with things. This is a very creative idea. I, I think its success is really going to depend on how well they can hammer it all together and how well the context of what you're building blends with the threats and the outside things that exist in the world. What is this? Let's see here. Lightkeeper Julius. We gain a guild facility. This guild, The guild used to have surveyors, explorers, wreck divers, and more, all funded to keep trade going and expand both free house and imperium settlements. But alas, much has been lost. Perhaps you can employ some guild surveyors? I don't know what guild surveyors do, but sure, you can come with me. I've... I will demolish your building if that is what brings you joy. It looks like, I mean, I don't have, so the surveyor building was definitely in deep water, strangely enough, but I'm getting a harbor ping when I put it out here. So was that built on some kind of like unique resource or something? Let's go back and look at it real quick. Like where do I relocate that to? Like what will be useful to me in the relocating don't look like there's anything special over here in the general region where it was. Who are you? Let's see here. We gain a transport vessel for stone and workers. If I put more captains on my iron, does it mean that my iron goes further? I didn't even think about that. Hold on. Let me go check. Let me put another captain on this bad boy over here. So we've got him there. And do I have anybody else that's good with iron? I do. Do I have a third one that's good with iron? I do not. Okay, so I need to get some more captains. But let's go look and see if that affected the trade lanes at all. Uh, it still looks kind of shaky. It doesn't look to me like it did affect anything over here. Like the spots that are shaky continue to be shaky. We're still producing plus four. Let's see if maybe I can build another facility over here to boost up our iron production, possibly. Because they do have a little smelter they built in the water down there, and it looks like they built one house. Like, it looks like they're trying to populate this area. I need a better camera angle. I can't really see what I'm doing here. No, 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 don't do that. Ah. Uh... That's not what I wanted. Okay. You, sir, I'm sorry. You got to go. I'm trying to hit like a sweet spot over here. Maybe I'll try right here. Oh, it worked. That's the surveyor facility, too. You cannot build here. There is no tower with access to wood nearby. Connect from a tower. With oh, a I need wood. wood. Uh, I need the wood. Uh, otherwise, I can't move the woods around. Okay, so we're going to have to get that guy back. I'm playing with the... I'm in that phase now where I vaguely know how the game works, but there's so many things that are, like, unexplained that I'm still, like, doing trial and error with certain things that I pick up and certain things that I interact with to be like, okay, well, what does this do? Okay, well, what does this do? This is my favorite part of a video game is just fiddling with things uh, that are unknowns. I, I consider that to be akin to, like, exploration, basically. Um, some people are not going to find that to be entertaining YouTube content, though. Uh, but for me, it is. Uh, these guys are producing wood right here. 
Um, let's say, so how far out will this go? It'll go out to there. All right, that's fine. I need this to connect to there. There you go. Has been connected. Stone is circulating, so we can take this up by a tier on both of these. They have been taken up by a tier. And houses are springing up all over the place. That's good. That's what you love to see. This is a very interesting title, in my opinion. This is what I this is precisely what I love about indie games right here. Is like the these very odd titles that buck all convention for how a city builder is like meant to function and meant to operate. And they just kind of run with this idea of like, okay, what if there was an ocean-born society? And they could only build on tower foundations, and then from there society expands, and then you you know you get attacked by things like this is very interesting to me. I would have oh there's another iron mine over here. Let's see here, quartermaster Harmon. Oh, this will give us this. Okay, so we get Imperium influence if we take their building. I don't know if that's a bad thing. I'm just incorporating everybody into my world right now. Honestly, I kind of feel like I should have left that standing because it would have boosted the population next to this iron production spot. Now I feel kind of dumb. Like maybe it was a smart decision to keep that there. And then I could have connected this. Since adding another transit pilot didn't really affect anything over there, I could reassign him over to here to drop off iron on this side, which would allow us to expand a little bit further out in various directions like into this crag over here. And make our society bigger, so I think I may have just made a mistake. That's what I'm leaning towards, is that I may have possibly made a mistake here. Eh, we'll drop it right here. And then we will harborealize right there. Uh, not going to assign a captain for a second. What is up with this? Forge Master Young. Freehouse Remnant, I assume the fires of the Red Mouth Orthodoxy welcome you and wishes to bring the glory of the Holy Ore to your settlement. I guess since we built... Oh, dude, look, it's got like a whale's mouth on top of it. So it's a specialized faction version of an iron mine. Huh, I wonder what the pirate iron mine looks like. That's really interesting. Like, there's a lot of things here that are, like, coming together in my brain, and I'm being like, oh, that's kind of unique. Oh, that's kind of unique. I'm actually at the end of my 30 minutes. I feel like I'm stoked for this. I can't say that I fully understand it or, like, what it is just yet because it feels like there's a lot of missing pieces and placeholders. But I, I am stoked to see what the final version of this looks like with your buildings being attacked by outside enemies. And like your cr your towers crumbling and falling into the ocean, throwing splashes and waves, like this feels like something that could turn into something really cool. For right now, it's kind of still like in that theoretical. But what I see here, so I have a couple. Of, I guess I usually do my closing thoughts, right? A lot of this game is still in the theoretical as to like how it's all gonna work because certain systems are not fully implemented yet. As I see it, there's a couple things during this 30 minutes and the 30 minutes I played before recording this that jump out to me as potential things that need to be worked on. First and foremost, camera's a little bit fiddly. The camera system works 80% of the time, but specifically when you're fiddling around with buildings and trying to run roads off of those buildings, if there's altitudinal distance or differences between where you're wanting to go, sometimes it'll snap onto weird spots and place bad roads, and then you gotta go bulldoze them, and then you gotta try and hit it from like a different angle. And it's taken me two or three tries, three or four tries, to get a building in the spot where I want it to go. And after an hour or two of playing, you'll figure out the quirks of how the perspective system works, but I can't help but feel like with regards to quality of life, that should function a little bit more seamlessly. And this is kind of useless feedback because I don't know... I believe that if you're going to give feedback, you should supply a replacement system or a replacement idea to play around with. But given how the game is open world and fully in three space, it's hard to say. I mean, I don't know what the middle mouse button does for this game. 
One thing I think they could do is they could swap the camera around to the middle mouse button when you hold it down. It looks like that just changes the facing of my harvester for right now, and I don't know what that's useful for. But being able to both pitch, rotate, yaw, like all that kind of stuff, just off your middle mouse, I think would be a good idea. So basically we have full X, Y, Z motion on the middle mouse button when we're going and it's locked stationary like this, I think would help out a little bit because then that would get rid of the conflict that's on the right click. But yeah, the camera. The camera is the number one spot where I feel like there's going to need to be a little bit of work to get it feeling a bit better. And it, I'm not being super helpful with that suggestion, unfortunately, because I don't know, given how the game works and how it needs to build on every surface of every pitch, and of every angle, I don't know what you could do. Yeah, it's tough to say. I don't know. The camera is the main thing, and then I think the game needs a little bit more context uh, to the tutorial and, like, why you're doing the certain things that you're doing rather than just how to do them. But I think that context is missing right now because the systems have not been finalized from what he said in that blurb before we started off the game. And so anyways... Uh, this is Bulwark. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of the indie game so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we have the follow-up game called Bulwark, uh, which is made by the developer of The Falconeer, uh, which is set in the same universe if you're familiar with that game. I will see you all later. Thank you for sharing your time with me, and that's about all I've got for you for right now. For now, this is a very compelling, interesting game, but until all the pieces are in there, I'm very hesitant to give it my nod of approval. I guess it's kind of where I'm at right now. We'll check back in on it when it's more contiguous. I'll see y'all next time. Thanks, everybody.